Hi everyone, welcome to this series of videos on uh, inventory management. Um, in this series of videos, we'll be looking at three types of uh, inventory. We'll call them uh, cycle inventory, safety inventory, and uh, seasonal inventory. Uh, we'll spend a good part of the semester on these three uh, uh, on these three topics, inventory management is a big part of managing supply chains and managing economies of scale and supply chain. So we'll begin with cycle inventory today. We'll spend a few weeks on this and then we'll move on to safety inventory and then on to seasonal inventory. So cycle inventory and safety inventory are related to each other in the sense that cycle inventory answers the question of um, well, if you are in a situation where you're managing inventories, for whatever reason, it could be because you're making a product or you're selling a product, you are a grocery stain, a chain selling salt, or you could be a furniture manufacturer selling furniture, whatever your, uh, uh, whatever kind of product you're selling, as long as you do it on a continuous basis, as long as there are cycles in which you sell your inventory, we talk about cycle inventory. And cycle inventory answers the question of how much should you be making or how much should you be ordering from your supplier. So that's that's the main thrust of this chapter, cycle inventory, figuring out what how much inventory you should have within your uh, system. Next chapter, uh, safety inventory, uh, that answers the question that answers the question of when should you place the next order or when should you start manufacturing the next batch. That you're going to manufacture and what you should you do in the meantime right so that's uh, safety inventory and finally seasonal inventory that's a different kind of inventory for products that are sold in specific seasons uh, for example flowers sold during mother's day or valentine's day there are specific kinds of flowers and they are sold for that season only and once that is done they can't be sold as much t-shirts for super bowl for example Right, so once once you figure out who wins the Super Bowl, uh, the T-shirts will will sell like gangbusters for a couple of months, and then of course people have moved on to the next season and uh, and everything that comes with the uh, football season. Right, so we'll talk about uh, cycle, uh, seasonal inventory the last uh, 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 towards the uh, later part of the semester. For the next three weeks, we'll be talking about cycle inventory. Right. So what is cycle inventory and what are we going to learn uh, in this chapter? So uh, cycle inventory. So uh, we have to balance the appropriate cost to choose the optimal lot size and cycle inventory in a supply chain. So let's talk about lot size and let's talk about cycle inventory. So we'll talk about this um, and we'll talk about quantity discounts a couple of weeks later on when we'll talk about trade promotions and how that uh, affects cycle inventory and whatnot. Then what do you do when you have single products? What do you do when you have multiple products? What do you do when you have to uh, ship multiple products? There are lots of interesting things that we'll talk about in this chapter, right? Okay, so uh, what is the role of cycle inventory in supply chain? So um, first, let's talk about the idea of batch size. Batch size is the quantity that a stage of supply chain either produces or purchases at a time. So when you order, let's say that you are a grocery store selling salt, then you have to order salt from your from say a distributor who's distributing salt throughout the northeast or something like that. Then that um, that order that you place that is a bad size. Or you could be a furniture manufacturer who manufactures furniture to sell uh, at their uh, retail store. Then that is also a bad size. So you are either producing it yourself or you're purchasing it from a, a, a distributor or a supplier who's supplying to you, right? And cycle inventory. So once you know what the bad size is, cycle inventory is the average inventory in the supply chain, which, which occurs due to either production or purchases in lot sizes that are larger than those demanded by the customer. So uh, once you order a batch size, so usually these things you either order from your supplier and you get them in batches or you manufacture and you usually manufacture at rates that tend to be uh, faster than the rates at which you sell, right? So in either of these cases, cycle inventory is the average amount of inventory you hold in the system, right? So that's what cycle inventory is. And throughout this, we'll be using uh, these 
Q to represent the quantity in a lot or a batch size and D to represent the demand per unit time. So usually we will use capital D to represent annual demand. And if you have any other type of demand, say monthly demand or weekly demand or, or daily demand, we'll uh, tend to use lowercase d. But you'll get used to that as we go through this uh, chapter, right? So when we order, uh, uh, in, uh, when we order uh, inventory from our supplier, our uh, inventory level looks like this. So you order a certain amount of inventory, it arrives. Let's say you have a warehouse at the back where you store all the salt that you ordered from the distributor and over a period of time you sell the inventory and the and and the and the way you plan it is such that as soon as your inventory level hits zero the next order arrives goes back to queue and the cycle repeats that's the idea of cycle inventory right so this cycle will repeat. This is assuming that you are ordering inventory from somewhere where the whole thing arrives in a batch. But if you're manufacturing it, it yourself, it looks similar, but but slightly different, not, not that much different, right? So this is the usual inventory profile for situations like this. Now, in reality, obviously, things don't happen in a straight line. That is, you don't sell exactly, say, 10 you know 10 boxes of salt a day or something like that some days you sell more some days you sell less but this is on an average what's happening in the system right okay now so uh, cycle inventory is calculated as half the lot size so this is q over 2 so if lot size is q like i said we're always going always going to be representing lot size with q so q over 2 uh, this is called cycle inventory or sometimes it's also called average inventory so cycle inventory or average inf inventory and the average uh, flow time resulting from cycle inventory is q over 2 times d so average flow time is average inventory divided by the average flow rate flow rate is how quickly are items demanded from you so average flow time can be written as average inventory which is cycle inventory divided by average flow rate which is basically demand so uh, average flow time is q divided by 2 times d again these are simple concepts we'll look at examples later on which um, th these things will be easy, easily clarified so here is a simple example uh, for lot sizes of 1000 and a daily demand of 100 uh, the average flow time will be q over 2d which will be 1000 times 2 times 100 which is 5 days which means that once inventory enters your system it will leave your system within five days that's the flow rate so on an average it takes five days for one unit of inventory to flow but remember this is average so some units some uh, some of your inventory will stay for longer than five days some of your inventory will stay for less than five uh, uh, more than five days some for less than five days but on an average it uh, averages out to five right okay now um, cycle inventory is usually held to take advantage of economies of scale because sometimes when you order larger larger batches of item you tend to get discounts on quantity discounts and so on and it also helps reduce some of the costs in the supply chain due to variation so you don't run out of inventory but the problem is if you hold too much inventory you have issues the flow time becomes larger which means that you're holding inventory for much longer which might look good on your books in the sense that inventory is considered counted as an asset but overall if you hold inventory for a long time you're also paying costs to hold that inventory and that can uh, those costs can easily add up so lower cycle inventory also means that you're you have lower working capital requirements and lower inventory holding costs now another issue is when you have shocks to the system like say we had during the pandemic having lower cycle inventory can have a huge effect on something like that right yeah so that's something to keep in mind okay so i'm not going to spend so what we'll talk about is we'll talk about a few key parameters that we need to understand the idea of how inventories cycle inventory is managed and then what i'll do is i will uh, record another video we'll talk about some cycle inventory models right so two situations, one where you order from your supplier and one where you are producing it yourself, right? So what are the key parameters that you need? So a few things that we need to know is the material cost, which is the average price that you pay to purchase one of the items or manufacture, depending upon how it works, right? So either purchase or manufacture. Uh, 
uh, and then a fixed ordering cost. So fixed ordering cost happens. Uh, this includes all the costs that do not vary with the size of the order. So you might order 10 items or 100 items, but sometimes when you place an order, there's a fixed cost for ordering. Say, for example, if you're ordering something from Amazon, whether you buy, say, um, you know, whether you buy, say, 10 pens or you buy two pens, you still have to go on Amazon. You still have to put it in your basket and click on buy and go through the whole process. That time is fixed. So that cost, if you're doing it in a job, that's that's time that you're not spending on doing something else. So that cost to the company is fixed, whether or not you order two, order two pens or you order 10 pens. So sometimes there are fixed ordering costs that you have to deal with. And we'll talk more about that in a few, in a few minutes. And then, of course, there's a holding cost. Once you acquire the item, if you don't use it right away or you don't sell it to the customer right away, you have to hold it uh, in inventory. And that there is an inventory cost for that. That's uh, that's the holding cost. And the holding cost is usually written as a percentage of the material cost. So let's say you're saying, OK, I spent uh, $10 to buy this item, right? then the holding cost is usually written as say 10% of that or a dollar. So you say that if I hold that item in inventory for a whole year, it's going to cost me a dollar. So you write it as a percentage. A lot of times this works out because uh, you're borrowing money to buy to buy what to finance your inventory. And so holding cost tells you how much you're paying in interest. So it's not just interest on, uh, uh, on the material cost that you paid, but also on, let's say you're holding it in, um, um, holding it in a warehouse, there are rental costs for the warehouse, maybe you're paying a watchman, maybe there is uh, electricity cost for the warehouse, and all of that go into this percentage. So you write it as a percentage of the cost that you pay to buy the ad. Right? Okay. So average price per unit, fixed order per lot, so each lot that you pay, and holding costs per unit per year, which is written as H times C. Right. So these are the important costs that you consider when uh, doing making lot size decisions. So ideally, cycle inventory decision should consider costs across the entire supply chain. But initially, when we write these models, when you talk about these models, we talk about it from the perspective of a single company. And then we'll see what happens when you have multiple companies to uh, think about. In practice, each stage makes its own supply chain decisions. So that's that's usually how it happens. So each part of the supply chain is a different company and they make their own individual decisions. Right? And finally is the EOQ model. Now this is where I'm going to end this video. We'll talk about the EOQ model in detail uh, in the next video. Um, I'll talk about a couple of models. Um, uh, one is the uh, EOQ model and then we have the uh, production lot sizing model, right? So we'll talk about both of that in the next video, right? I'll see you then. Take care.